again, the setup of this operation is really everything. And having the two C arms in place so that a perfect AP and lateral can be seen. Can you see the AP and lateral, Jens? Yes. We can see it. Can you show them the tip of the dens on the AP, the lateral masses of C1, how the odontoid is centered between the lateral masses on the AP? All right. Because it's crucial that you see this. If you cannot visualize this, you can't do this operation. And a lot of times there's a lot of manipulation of the head and the mouth, opening the mouth, um, shooting through the mouth help from your anesthesiologist, but you have to get these views first. And then by, once everything, the odontoid is reduced, you think everything is set, then you need to make sure that you can get your shot. And so I just take a straight um, tool, put it to the side of the head, and get a lateral x-ray. Once you shoot that lateral. All right, shoot again. All right. And Jens, can you see that lateral? Yes, we can do. You see, can you see my hand then um, and how I am clearing the chest? We so, cannot see your hand right now. You can't so see my hand. But the video camera does not show your hand. Right, we what, see the outside. What I will tell you is that my hand is basically just above his chest. So I can just barely get this shot, right? Got it. Uh, which is good. So now I would say this is technically feasible and we can do this operation. So then the exposure, as we talked about, is uh, usually through a standard ACDF incision at C56, and then we, um, we track cephalad to the C2, C3 disc space. And I'll tell you, on this patient, he had huge osteophytes at C34. I actually had to remove those osteophytes. I don't know if you can see that on the lateral x-ray, but big, big, huge osteophytes I actually had to take out because my um, tool will not, my, the, I couldn't get my drill bit down in the proper fashion. Um, so one question, Rick, is do you use handheld retractors to avoid esophageal over distraction or do you use uh, anything tricky without avoiding, or without mentioning company names? Uh, are there any retraction tricks? I use nothing tricky. I, I simply use a handheld uh, re retractor and have uh, uh, my assistant hold it. I, I use standard medial lateral retractors and then uh, just a handheld retractor uh, cephalad. I don't All know right. if you can see how we have it set up here, but this is pretty much how I have it set up. Great, yep. We see it nicely now. Can you shoot uh, an AP and a lateral r r right here? Um, all right, no, you see one of the problems with the AP, you see we need like a radiolucent retractor. Go ahead and shoot that again. So um, we can see the odontoid tip nicely. That's a beautiful yes. picture. What did you do with the mouth? Did you do any corks from your wine bottles, as Dr. McBride said, or? Yep, two corks, two corks in the mouth. That's right. Can, can we get a lateral? Can we see the lateral? Okay, so can you see those images right now, Jens? Very nice. So actually, you see how the drill guide is right down top of the C3 vertebral body? Yep. You can see there were big uh, osteophytes there. You can see how that would actually kick my hand up and actually get me too uh, shallow a shot, right? So I had to remove those so I could get my drill bit down. So right now, Rick, it looks like your drill looks very much anterior uh, to where you would like to start. You kind of showed us before how you start through the inferior end plate of C2. Um, do you take any disc out at C23? You said you uh, took an osteophyte out. Yes, and actually get in into the disc space. Uh, basically, take the anterior aspect of the annulus out. Um, can if I show this? Can can you guys see this? I say the problem is I can't. Oh yeah, yeah, we can see you there. You can see that. So what I do is take the anterior aspect of the annulus out so that I can get this drill bit actually right into that, there's, there's usually a little lip here, right into that lip, into the groove. You do not want to start out here anterior on the vertebral body. That's one of the most common mistakes of this operation. You want to get into the disc space and into the very good hard cortical bone in the inferior end plate. And then once you get that starting point, 
Then on AP and lateral x-ray, you line everything up. Um, go ahead and get the AP again. AP and the lateral. Okay. Um, and once I'm happy with that, I... So what I would normally do is take a 2.5 millimeter drill bit because we have very good control with a drill bit as opposed to a K-wire. Now the problem is this system is set up with K-wires. Can, can you see this K-wire? I'm going to show you this K-wire. You see how thin this is? This is how this system is set up to put this K-wire. The problem is with this K-wire, once it starts to go, it's very difficult to maneuver this K-wire because it's so thin. On the other hand, this drill bit, I can, I can with very, very uh, fine uh, movements, change my trajectory so it's exactly where I, where I want it to be. Okay, shoot the lateral. Can you shoot, shoot the lateral? All right. Can you see that, Jens? Yes, see the very tip, well. Tip of That's the dens? Beautiful. Okay. And shoot, shoot the AP. You see the AP? Yep. Right. So with the 2.5 millimeter drill bit, I would take it all the way across and then pierce the, the uh, tip of the dens. Can you shoot the lateral? Shoot the lateral, which I'm right there right now. I actually can feel it. And let's see. Let's move this, the, the AP. Shoot, shoot the AP. And most of the time, you can feel this. You can feel just like any other cortical bone. You go right through it. You hear the change in pitch. You go right through it. And um, with most of these systems, you can then measure sort of the, the length of this screw, which looks to be like a 44, right? So then I would uh, remove the 2.5 millimeter drill bit, and then I would over drill the body fragment and actually on a lateral watch this go up to the fracture site. So I would change to, okay, can you shoot that again? Shoot, uh, okay, shoot that again. And I would drill right to the fracture and not go across the fracture site, right? And then I would take the tap, and again, the tap should go right through the gliding hole to the, to the fracture. Can you shoot that? Shoot, shoot the lateral. So let's say that's where the fracture is, a, a typical type two uh, fracture. And then I would tap through the tip of the dens. Can you shoot that? Shoot the lateral? All right, and I can feel just going right through the tip of the dens, just like any other cortical bone. You can usually feel as you're going through it. Uh, shoot that again. And the AP. So now I've uh, tapped the dense fragment. And then the screw, again, will go through the gliding hole. It'll glide. Now, unfortunately, this is a partially threaded screw. Uh, I would use a fully threaded screw. But um, can you shoot that? Shoot the lateral. It should go right to the fracture site. And then it should start engaging the tapped portion. Can you shoot that? All right, and usually you can feel as it's, can you shoot the lateral again? All right, and usually you can feel as it starts to engage and the lag effect occurs. Can you shoot the AP? You've done this before, right, Rick? And the lateral one more time. Just a few times. OK. So that's it, Jens. And then so, you make sure you put the head, once you have this across, have the anesthesiologist flex the head, flex and extend, just to make sure that you have no C1, C2 instability. That was obvious. That's fantastic, Rick. Hey, quick question. Can we have a pan out to see the C-arm setup? Can the videographer can, pull yeah, can back? You, can you pull back the camera and see the setup? So which CM do you put in first, the lateral and then the AP, or how do you, how do you yes. sequence that? Yep, I usually put the lateral in first. That's really uh, sort of the workhorse, but you have to have a good AP. I mean, you, 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 I have seen so many times, Jens, where uh, post-operatively from somewhere else you see a screw that's an air ball and, and you know what, what happened is that they did this operation without a good AP and, and you can't do it. 
Well, that looks great. Um, any other questions from the group? Yeah, we have a, a question. Wait a second, Rick. Yeah, Rick, when you're working on the uh, C23 disc, how much of it do you remove? So I remove basically the anterior part of the annulus, the anterior annulus, maybe a third to a half of the annulus. You, you absolutely need to, to remove that to get into that little lip of, of C2. All right, so you won't ex uh, expect any uh, instability happening later on at C23. You know, I've never seen that. I was always initially worried about degeneration of the 2-3 disc because, you know, without a doubt, you get into that, that disc. But I actually have not seen that. Jens, have you seen that? Any no. problems with the 2-3 disc? I, I remain exactly like you said, amazed at the willingness of the C2-3 disc to do without its anterior annulus. Any other disc would fall apart. Yes. Andrew? Yeah, one second. Andrew has a comment. We, we looked at Ron series, and actually the ones where the C23 disc ankylosed early on were the ones who went on to non-unions. And I guess that makes sense because the screw tip is loose, but we did see an instance of that, you know, in that 8 to 10 percent that went on to non-unions, particularly in the older patients. Uh, Rick, one last question, then we'll switch over to Andrew. This is really great. Um, now, this was obviously an intact odontoid. What do you do with one of those completely unstable odontoids that does not interdigitate on, you know, that doesn't hook on, that just keeps floating around all the time? You've got it reduced. You're starting to drill. It drifts off. So, uh, so tell us a little bit through some of the troubleshooting that you might uh, use. Yeah, so a sharp drill and a drill that's going very fast, right? Um, this is a, a, a problem not only with the dantoids, but other things that, that we're drilling, right? So you actually have much more tactile feel and much more ability to drill cleanly into something when the drill is going extremely fast. Uh, light touch, but very, very, very fast. And um, as in this case, uh, it was very difficult, actually, as I got into the dens because um, the drill flutes get filled with bone, so you frequently need to clean your, your drill bit and make sure you have a very sharp drill bit and it's clean. Awesome. Thank you, Rick. Really, a really great job. Thank you. Thank you.